Oh boy, you're gonna love today's video, ladies and gentlemen. You know, picking on Microsoft is like picking on a special ed person. Like, it's just too easy. You start feeling bad, and you should feel bad. Because honestly, as a Linux user looking at Microsoft's updates, I'm flabbergasted, okay? <laughs> I am sent to the moon <laughs> that they are actually this goddamn incompetent. Now, what are we talking about, ladies and gentlemen, today? You know how we talked about Microsoft being bloated? Well, what if I told you Microsoft admitted to being bloated? They're just admitting to bloating the system now. <laughs> this is a new update, ladies and gentlemen. They will preload a file explorer to fix the bad performance. Now, I might be like, whoa, Muda, hold on, hold on a second. What if we just optimize the code a little bit? What if we just cleaned up things? What if we cleaned up the technical debt that we've been accumulating? Nah, bitch! Put that into the memory 100% of the time so it loads faster. What are you, stupid? What are you, crazy? <laughs> so here it is, Microsoft Insider Preview Build. Now this build is kind of cool. I want to get the good stuff out of the way. Apparently, Microsoft has allowed you to uh, use their Xbox full gaming experience on any handheld you have through this. So if you have a Steam Deck or if you have a Rogue Ally or a Legion Go, you can install Windows 11 developer channels and you can basically use that de-bloated Windows experience. Now it's actually interesting that Microsoft lets you do this because even with the de-bloated Windows 11 experience where it just doesn't load a lot of the un like the like the uh, like the nonsense for handheld controller experience, Somehow, installing Linux on the device is still giving you a better de-bloated experience than Microsoft's de-bloated experience. And remember, this is the same company that has the amazing, I, in my opinion, Xbox user interface sitting for their Xbox consoles to this day. Again, I don't know why Microsoft can't just bring that over, try porting it over, try working with AMD, but it is what it is. <laughs> so again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what happens here? We're exploring preloading file explorer in the background to help improve <laughs> performance. This shouldn't be visible to you. Outside of Fire Explorer, hopefully launching faster when you need to use it. Dog, it is a file explorer. To give you a quick idea, I have a virtual machine right over here, God bless. And in this virtual machine, I've got the Muta file manager. The Muta file manager was created in C++ using the Qt framework. Put this one really quickly together. It's obviously not very optimal. But again, just to show you what a file manager is, all you do is go into the fucking file manager and browse for files. You can even copy and paste this. I put this together in Qt Framework, if you're interested. So to go back to the Windows 11 developer channel, as you can see, I have it completely installed, ready to go in this VM. I want you to excuse some of the visual uh, style here just for recording the video. I'm not passing through my GPU. I have a single GPU system, not willing to delete or destroy anything. So here I'm on the developer channel, 26.220.7271. Now, if I open up the old file explorer right over here, it takes a little bit of time to open. It's not as snappy as I would expect it to be, but uh, it opens up pretty quickly, and it's just a file browser. It is meant for me to browse files. You know, I use this shit all the time whenever I gotta, like, actually, you know, mod games or move files around, which is a pretty common thing on my system. So again, obviously, one of the things about it is they've got a whole bunch of AI crap stuffed into this. Everything has a co-pilot button attached. You know, you go to your goddamn pictures. You know, you want to look at a picture of Sonic. You got to right click. You get those AI actions stuffed near you. Give that a little bit of time to load up on your system. Because goddamn, here it is. Blur the background. Remove a background. So yeah, if you wanted to do basic shit, that's what all of this stuff is stuffed with these days. Now, of course, you might be like, what's the what's the old what's the old uh, bloat tax on this one, Muda? Well, if you check out the old if you check out the old system task manager, thankfully it finally shuts off properly. You'll notice that yeah, you know, you got your old file explorer sitting over there and it just chews up memory along the way. 
Uh, also, you've got Discord somehow chewing up 416 megabytes of memory, total electron moment, but it is what it is, and Copilot sitting there menacingly. Now, obviously, I don't think on a lot of modern systems, like if you're on a gaming system, if you got like 16 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs, which, you know, a lot of people are starting to get, I don't know how with these RAM prices, but if you got a decent system, you're probably not going to notice any of this. But if you've got a budget-friendly gaming system, look, every single megabyte kind of adds up, okay? Every single process on your thread starts to add up. When you don't have enough to work with, every little bit counts. Now the thing is that background applications exist in Windows 11, but the concept of pre-caching didn't really come new with Windows 11. I mean, if you're gonna go all the way back to things like uh, Windows 95 or other tools like Office 95, yeah, you had definite things in like the Windows tray. You had a lot of pre-caching back in the day. Windows XP literally did have that crazy prefetcher. Even Windows Vista, Windows 7 with Superfetch and whatnot and ReadyBoot. The thing about these technologies is you have to remember back in the day, okay, the hard drives were coming on spinning mechanical drives, meaning that literally disk access was an actual bottleneck in many cases. Now, in most cases, back in the day when I was younger, I saw this video of like some guy loading up Windows XP in like seconds. And as a kid, I was blown away. And then, you know, that's when I learned what an SSD was. Now, back when I was a kid, SSDs were prohibitively expensive. Like really, it was just, an enthusi it was like kind of buying an enthusiast part in your PC nowadays. Really only the people with money were getting it. Nowadays, the average computer, for the most part, everyone kind of has an SSD. In fact, SSDs are superseded by even faster uh, methods of like, you know, uh, file storage. So yeah, it's something that we used to do back in the day, but in the days of SSDs, we do not need to be caching things into our RAM in order to load. This is just bad shit from Microsoft. That's it. The wildest thing about this too is like, obviously this is coming off the heels of like other situations with Microsoft where like, they even pretty much downright admit that several shell components are absolutely broken. I don't know about this whole like Microsoft like vibe coding thing. Like I know they said that 30% of the shit that they write is written through an artificial intelligence. But again, I really didn't expect that to kind of bleed on over to the core operating system. I don't know what's going on in Microsoft land, but things are accelerating to the point where I feel like deliberately somebody at Microsoft is kind of trying to pave the way for the Linux desktop. It really does fucking feel that way, man. Like these people do not want to actually put any effort into making a deep loaded functional operating system. And I've seen tons of people bring up other things. Like for instance, hey, Windows is had a Windows is a dog shit application. Why not download a special new file browser like File Pilot? And immediately when I look at this, I think this is not the answer, okay? You know, I'll tell you right now, anytime somebody downloads like one of these debloater scripts for Windows, for instance, right? Where like they debloat Windows 11 and they like gut the shit out of it, or they download tools like this. Like for instance, here's a new file explorer and you look at it, it's not even any different really from what I'm using on Linux for free, by the way. But then you go to their website and it's like, whoa, <laughs> there's a paid experience here too? You know, I never thought in my life that I would think of paying for a file explorer, but let's look at the pricing model for this one. Ooh, 56 Canadian for value seekers? <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, a file explorer is just one of those programs you never ever really need to download, okay? You just don't need it. <laughs> like never, and when I use my Mac system, I'm like, damn, you know what? Maybe I should download, no, I just use Finder. <laughs> I feel at this point, I should probably see what the fuck file pilot is and, and just, just see how it compares, at least for now. I'll tell you right now, it's only two megabytes large. That's kind of crazy. Ah, failed creating OpenGL context. I don't have a GPU pass through it, but I guess we need GPU acceleration. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, just, just fucking kill me. <laughs> I just want to die. <laughs> I'm not even joking there. You know what, man? Honestly, like, I, I, I'm just going to recommend it. Just take me back to the days of fucking Total Commander, bro. <laughs> Somehow this ended up winning the file manager race on Windows, I guess.
Now, you know, the interesting thing about this is like, look, I would say go to Linux, but you know, a few weeks ago we had like, what, that Windows Task Manager bug? And you know, I didn't mention it at the time, but I opened up the terminal to fix an issue in Windows. So, you know, I don't want to hear anything about like Linux people being shit on anymore. Oh, wow, well, Linux users have to open up the fucking terminal to install a web browser. Bro, you have to use a terminal shell to kill the fucking task manager, okay? That's how bad it's gotten on Windows, okay? I'm not saying this to be an asshole. I'm saying this because we, we've reached this point. You know, on, on, on Linux entirely for free underneath Cache OS, you don't have to pay a dime for most Linux distros, only like a few that kind of fall into the enterprise realm at times. But you see this little dolphin over here, not the emulator, all I do is click this once and whoa, it just snaps up an entire web browser for anybody to see. So again, with this, uh, not web browser, but this file browser, and it's got all the features that a file browser needs, like browsing the fucking files, you know, copy and pasting the fucking files, maybe sharing the files, uh, going into my specific places, uh, like here, <laughs> going to other file directories, going to other hard disk drives, maybe? <laughs> Looking at network stuff? Yeah, you know, this is like kind of par for the course, you know what I mean? Maybe having a little terminal shell inside? <laughs> By the way, all entirely for free. And if you really do compare it to, again, most of most most Linux systems, one thing that you'll see is like, again, just on a background system, it's very de-bloated for the most part, right? Like my actual file manager has 109 megabytes being used at any given point, okay? That's about it, all right, for the most part. And you know the best part is, <clears throat> when I do shut it off, it actually completely eliminates itself from the list, meaning that the resources on my system are just substantially more freed up for things like gaming, for things like productivity, for really anything. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how Microsoft has decided to ruin the experience even further, but they just, I swear to God, dude, I am just blown away at this company. <laughs> You know, Linux has never been this easy to get. I'll give you an idea right now. There is one operating system called Zorin OS, which apparently has had like a million downloads apparently since Windows 10 reached end of life. And I don't think people, I don't know if this number is by the way completely accurate, I haven't audited it myself. But the thing is, I feel like for a lot of people who yearn for something different, Having an operating system that looks and feels like Windows, uh, except without the bloat, without the nonsense, is something that's becoming a lot easier. For the most part, a lot of the stuff that most people do when it comes to a computer is pretty feature complete between Linux, Mac, and Windows. A lot of stuff people do just on a web browser. So really, if you want an operating system that respects you, the Penguin has never been better than it is. And for gamers, look, 90% of the games that we play are pretty much feature complete and running on Linux. Obviously, anti-cheat stuff, some special software that still runs only on Windows and Mac is something that has yet to make the switch. But I do feel in time, dude, maybe by next year, maybe the year after that, we might come across another breakthrough. Never say never in the, in the world of computer software. But yeah, you know, there are other options. You can freely switch off instead of dealing with the bullshit that Microsoft keeps getting you. If you are somebody that keeps putting up with this, it's because you yourself refuse to change, or at least look for greener pastures. And there are people that need Windows, I'm not discounting it, like if you wanna play certain games or need certain software, sure. But if you're not one of those people and you're still dealing with this bullshit, just seek better fucking pastures, man, come on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe, just like if you dislike it, I am out.